Like the rest of us, former Iowa defensive lineman A.J. Epinesa waiting for real sports to happen. And one of those first events that will take place is the NFL Draft later this month. A.J., what have you been doing since the last time we saw you publicly, I guess, which was at the Combine some six weeks ago? Yeah, um, well, I've been home in Glen Carbon, Illinois, spending time with my family. And uh, um, I've been lucky enough to have um, a family friend I grew up with. His dad owns a gym in their backyard, a private property and private gym. And so he's been allowing me to come and uh, lift weights over at their place. And then I've been able to sneak on some fields lately just because everything's closed and uh, they'll kick you off the field if they catch you out there. What did you take away from the combine when you left Indianapolis? Um, it was a really good experience. I thought my interviews and testing or my interviews and all those things went well. Um, and obviously I didn't run what I wanted to run. Um, I was pretty disappointed with um, my uh, numbers when it came to the 40 and the jumping and all that stuff. But um, I thought during the D-line drills and the linebacker drills, I looked really fluid and stuff that I had been working on really hard. And um, those are all things I can obviously get better at. But um, I think to a some extent, the 40 and uh, all that stuff really are just kind of um, not all that football oriented, but they're also, I mean, they're important and that's what, um, that's what we train for. Um, so as a competitor, I was uh, disappointed that I didn't uh, perform as well as I wanted to. That being said, we're now in a situation where that old saying, just go back and watch the film is even more appropriate because that's all anybody can do right now. How much communication is there right now between NFL teams and prospects getting ready for this draft? Um, there's a lot. I mean, because all the uh, pro days, all the visits and everything are canceled. And so there's no more face-to-face -face interaction. It's all like this. And so coaches are trying to get as many as they can. And they're trying to communicate with these guys and try to get to know them as players because they're still looking at them as um, people they want to invest in and put time and money into. And so um, they got to know what they're getting and who they're getting. Um, and so um, they're putting a lot of energy into these phone calls and um, these big decisions that are coming up. And so, um, yeah, it's been pretty busy. Um, I'm on the phone every day. Um, uh, but, I mean, it's enjoyable. I wish it was the other way around where we could visit just because you could go new places and stuff like that. But um, it's just unfortunate that no one can do it this time, uh, this time around. Yeah, I think pretty much everybody mm -hmm. is wishing that yeah. that were the case. Without revealing who's asking these kind of questions, what kind of questions are they asking? Are there any bizarre questions that are being asked right now, especially considering the time that we're all living in? Um, bizarre questions, I would say no. Um, but just kind of not weird questions either. They just ask you stuff like, uh, um, wh why do you love football? Like, do you really love it and why? Um, like, um, what kind of adversity have you gone through as a football player? Um, uh, what would your coaches say about you? And st stuff like that where um, – they just want to know what you say. And I mean, obviously, and they can talk to your coaches because, I mean, they have that thing. And so they obviously can um, have that communication. But um, they've been going well for the most part, and I've been enjoying them. So answer that one question for me that you brought up. What would Kirk Ferentz and Phil Parker say about you as a player? I think they would tell you that I'm a hardworking guy. I come in every single day, and I go to work, and I get my work done. I just do what I got to do, and I get it done. AJ, because of your size, and I've also heard specifically because of your hand strength, there's a conversation that you could possibly serve as a hybrid on the D-line, play both defensive tackle and defensive end. Has that been a conversation that you've had? Is that something that you're interested in at the next level? I've heard things where um, because of my heavy handedness and the things that they think I can do well, they think first and second down, I would be good at setting edges and um, uh holding at the line of scrimmage and making plays or making tackles for a loss. And then on third down, being versatile enough to go at the three technique and rush the passer from there. How much does playing in a defense like the one you played in at Iowa with so many pro style principles help you get ready for the next level? It helps you just because uh, I was so fundamentally oriented. I mean, our defense is so tighten it to where if one person doesn't do their job that could lead to a big touchdown or easy score for them and so um we're so technique and fundamental oriented that you have to be where you're supposed to or a big play could pop off and you just have to always be doing your job and that's kind of our mantra is doing your 111th and doing what you have to do that's more math than i want to get into so let's get into an easier question as you officially get ready to say goodbye to your college career in a couple <clears throat> of weeks here when you hear your name called what's your best memory from your time in iowa city um, there's a lot of good members in Iowa City. I mean, I have a lot of good people there um, because my dad played there. And so there's a lot of uh, 
guys from his team that have been supportive of me and all this and that. And then I have a lot of good friends. Um, but if we're going to talk about the best moment, I mean, beating some big teams were, were a big thing whenever we were in Iowa. The night games at Kinnick, I mean, everyone knows to be nervous about those. But um, Ohio State and then uh, Minnesota this past year were some big moments and uh, some big games for our program. And we ended up pulling out the win and um, knocking out two undefeated teams, I think, at the time. Obviously, there's so much uncertainty, AJ. So before we let you go, do you know what your plans are right now for the night of the draft? Do you expect to be spending it at home with your family? What exactly do you plan to be doing that evening? Um, I think we're just going to have my immediate family here um, and at my hometown. We're going to all be in my living room. We're going to set up all the stuff that um, is sent to us to, um, to maybe uh, broadcast it and, and all the stuff that the NFL sends. And so um, – I think I think I was on that list of the virtual uh, draft stuff. I'm not sure, but I'll be here in my hometown with my family, um, and we're going to be sitting on the couch, being close together, and then uh, pa uh, patiently waiting for our time. Well, we hope you don't have to wait very long. We don't think you will. We can say that we will miss you terribly at the Big Ten Network. Right. Terrific college career at Iowa. AJ, congratulations on all your success. Best of luck, not just this April, but moving forward into the NFL. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you